Hi everybody, I'm going to read the story of the week. It's lesson 28, Museums, Worlds of Wonder. Museums are wonderful places. That doesn't just mean terrific places. It means places that fill you with wonder, that surprise and amaze you. It also means places that make you wonder about the world, about nature, about history, about people. How do museums do that? No two museums do it in the same way. There are art museums, science museums, historical museums, and nature museums. There are museums that focus on a single subject, like music boxes or postage stamps, and there are museums that seem to go in dozens of different directions at once. Here's a brief tour of five museums that are very different from each other, but all of them are full of wonders. So I guess they're talking about these different museums. Looks like one's in Portland, Oregon, Chicago, Illinois, St. Louis, Missouri, Houston, Texas, and Washington, D.C. Okay. City Museum of St. Louis, Missouri. The first thing you should know about the City Museum of St. Louis is that it is located in an old shoe factory. It's no surprise then that this museum believes in preserving the past and recycling, making something new out of something old. There's also an amazing playground called Monstro City that's made mostly of recycled materials from the city of St. Louis, including giant metal springs, a castle turret, and the body of a jet plane. Cool. Artist Bob Cassily designed the city museum as a huge work of art. Take the enchanted caves, where shoes once moved on conveyor belts through tunnels, children now run into petrified dragons and climb spiral staircases. In Art City, you can watch glass blowers at work and make your own work of art too. Then there's the museum inside the museum. It's called the Museum of Mirth, Mystery, and Mayhem, and it's like an old-fashioned carnival. Finally, let's not forget the World Aquarium, home to more than 10,000 sea creatures, from stingrays to seahorses. Sweet. National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Are you interested in space and flight? Have you ever wondered where the Wright Brothers' original airplane is? If so, then the natural, or sorry, the National Air and Space Museum is the place for you. It has the largest collection of aircraft and spacecraft in the world. Begin with the Milestones of Flight exhibit. You'll see the Spirit of St. Louis, the first plane to be flown nonstop across the Atlantic Ocean by a solo pilot. Want some faster flyers? Check out the Era Comet, the first American jet, and the X-15, which flew six times the speed of sound. Upstairs, you'll find the airplane that made it all possible, the Flyer, which Orville and Wilbur Wright first flew in 1903. Next, let you imagine soar into space. This museum is home to Sputnik 1, the first satellite to successfully orbit Earth, and the Apollo 2, or sorry, Apollo 11 command module, which carried the first men to the moon. Here also are replicas of spacecraft that have flown to Mars, Venus, and Jupiter. The Albert Einstein Planetarium lets you feel what it might be like to zoom through the galaxy. The ride simulator takes you on a virtual spacewalk. Finally, there is a real moon rock you can touch that the Apollo 17 astronauts brought back. Ooh, dinosaurs. Okay, looks like this is called the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois. You could spend days exploring the Field Museum in the city of Chicago. The museum contains more than 20 million items, including mummies, meteorites, and mammals. With so much to see, you might not have time to meet Sue. That would be a mistake. Who's Sue? Oh, Sue is the largest Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton ever found. Cool. Um, ever found as well as the most complete. Sue is 42 feet long with more than 200 bones, 
real bones, not plaster ones, all except for Sue's second skull. It's a case of two heads being better than one. Sue's five foot long skull was so big and heavy that the museum staff had to put it in a glass case by itself. They had, or sorry, they made a lighter model for the skeleton on display. You can put your nose just inches from Sue's real skull if you dare. You also can handle models of some of Sue's bones, including a huge tooth and a rib. By the way, Sue was named after Sue Hendrickson, the woman who found her in South Dakota. No one really knows if Sue is male or female. World Forestry Center and Discovery Museum in Portland, Oregon. A museum that's about trees? The World Forestry Center's Discovery Museum will make you appreciate forests more than ever before, including forests around the world. On the first floor of the museum, you can explore forests that grow in the Pacific Northwest. You can discover what lives under the forest and then take a ride to explore the treetops. On another ride, you can learn how smoke jumpers fight forest fires. The museum shows the many things that forests provide, such as wood, water, habitat, and clean air. On the second floor, a giant wall map tells about different types of forests worldwide. Then you can see for yourself. Take a train ride to the forests of Siberia and a boat ride to a forest lake in China. Ride a Jeep to visit forest animals in South Africa. Look down on the canopy of Brazil's Amazon rainforest. Cool, that sounds awesome. Okay, I think this is the last one. Is this number five? It's the American Cowboy Museum at Taylor Stevenson Ranch near Houston, Texas. Many museums are important for changing old ideas people may have. Through hands-on exhibits, talks, and even horseback riding, the American Cowboy Museum gives the true history of a popular legend. There is a lot we can learn about the American Cowboy. For example, did you know that as many as one third of all cowboys were African Americans? Many cowboys were Native Americans, and the first cowboys of Varqueros were from Mexico. And of course, cowboys also included women. The museum part, or sorry, the museum is part of the Taylor Stevenson Ranch, which is 150 years old. It has been owned by generations of an African American family. About 50 years ago, the family started the museum to honor the part Native Americans, African Americans, Hispanics, and women played in settling the West. The founders, Molly Stevenson Jr. and her mother, Molly Stevenson Sr., are also the first living African Americans in the National Cowgirl Hall of Fame. Ooh. Okay, let me see. Yep, that's it.